before going to characteristics let's first understand what is monopoly monopoly means a single seller mono means one poly means seller so monopoly taken together means a single seller it's a market which is ruled by a single seller there's only one seller in the market normally we don't get many examples wherein you have only one seller in the market but let me give you an example the example of railways is the best example that we can consider for monopoly it's a market wherein only a single player is allowed to operate he is the only seller in the market not necessarily he has homogeneous goods he is a single product he might have many products but the condition is he is a single seller in the market so a market where there is only one seller it becomes monopoly now the characteristics are he is a single seller as we've discussed there are restrictions to entry there are barriers to entry now this is pretty much understandable there are restrictions to entry and probably this is the reason why there is only one seller now the government does not allow any of the private players to enter into the railways business the government does not allow any of the private players to enter into defense business so there are barriers to entry government has put restrictions on the entry of other businesses other firms other organizations to enter into the business of railways and defense so we can say government has put barriers to the entry so a monopolistic market does have restrictions to entry no close substitutes no close substitutes this is one of the reasons why the seller becomes a monopoly seller if the product would have close substitutes in the market the consumers would go for the substitutes it is because the product does not have substitutes in the market there is demand for the products of the product of the monopolist now let's say if there are substitutes available for railways there are very close substitutes you wouldn't mind traveling by those modes but we see there are hardly any close substitutes for railways the other options that you have is airways or travel by bus but there aren't many close substitutes you don't have some things like trains which are running parallelly with the trains i mean the example of bullet trains the example of metros or the example of local trains they have a very limited and restricted area in which they operate if you have to go from mumbai to delhi you will have to take it you cannot go in a metro train you cannot travel in a local train so there are no close substitutes for a train travel from mumbai to delhi if there were substitutes you wouldn't mind choosing for the substitute but there aren't any so you have to travel by the mail train thus we see there are no close substitutes in a monopoly market price elasticity of demand remains less than 1 and when the price elasticity of demand is less than 1 we call such an elasticity as inelastic demand or relatively inelastic demand now why does the price elasticity of demand is less than 
it is less than one because people have to purchase from the monopoly seller only let's say if there was only one seller of salt you would have to purchase salt from him only because salt is your necessity if there was only one seller of shoes you will have to purchase shoes from him because if the sellers in the market for shoes increase your demand for shoes won't increase your demand will remain the same if the seller for shoes in the market decreases your demand for shoes does not decrease or increase so the demand is not related with the number of sellers your demand remains the same irrespective of the number of sellers so you can say your demand is almost inelastic and this is very much pertinent very much related to a monopoly market because if there is only one seller you will purchase from him only whatever be the good so the demand will remain inelastic next is price discrimination in a monopoly market because there is only one seller he is the king he may choose to sell the product at a higher price to person a at the same time he might choose to sell the product at a lower price to the person b he makes the price so he can discriminate because he is the single seller if he opts if he chooses to sell at a higher price you will still have to purchase it from him if he chooses to sell it at a lower price you will still have to purchase it from him so he has the power to discriminate as far as prices are concerned so these are the characteristics of a monopoly market